everybody welcome back if you're new here welcome to the goddess community my name is mandy diego grace i am your host and this is the hello goddess podcast where we talk about mindset spiritual development and wellness so today i wanted to make a video and i want to start by apologizing because um i was kind of taking a break from social media to help my mom my mom owns a halloween costume shop for uh halloween costume rentals so that's what i was doing for the past week or two and now i'm back i wanted to make a video for you guys because i'm aiming for one video a week right now which is doable but sometimes i i tend to procrastinate and overthink things so i just thought i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna talk about the subject and However it turns out, it will turn out. So if you follow me, um, last year I made a video about the law of attraction. And it's also on my podcast, on my YouTube channel. And I talked a little bit like about the basics of law of attraction. I thought it would be a good time for me to make a new video about the science behind the law of attraction. How it, does it actually work? Like I know for a lot of people, it's a little bit too woo-woo. It started out more in the spiritual communities uh, and then now it's more and more popularized by uh, personal development figures and it's even becoming more popular in business uh, circles so I wanted to explain to you guys my perspective on what it really is and how you can harness the power of the law of attraction to create the life of your dreams I also want to mention thank you so much for watching, for all of the support, for liking my videos and um, commenting. I do this from the bottom of my heart because the content that I'm creating, the information that I'm sharing has helped me on so many levels and I want to be able to help other people as well and be a vessel for that information that transforms your life. So thank you so much for showing up and thank yourself as well for making the time for yourself to learn something about yourself. All right, so let's jump right in. For the law of attraction, I wanna name this video the science of the law of attraction because uh, I already explained more of the spiritual side of it. I wanna explain how it actually works on a scientific and neurological side. Uh, so let's just begin by saying something that is well known in the science community. Everything around us is energy. So there's nothing that is not energy my body all my organs um the table in front of me the sun the air like everything in the universe is made up of energy and particles what is like solid matter is condensed energy at a frequency that is so 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 intense that it becomes a particle so it's safe to say whether or not you're a spiritual person we can agree that the universe is made up of energy in this energetic universe, there are laws. So for example, there is the law of gravity. Doesn't no matter where you are in the world, it's going to apply. That's why we call it a law. So for example, if I drop this, it's gonna drop into my hand. If it doesn't drop into my hand, there's something wrong because the law of gravity is all, it's ab absolute. We can say the same exact thing about the law of attraction. To explain that in more detail, you have to understand as well that all energy vibrates at a cer certain frequency. So there's lower vibrational frequencies and there's higher and there's, it's really a spectrum. So the way that the law of attraction works is basically like attracts like. So similar frequencies are attracted to each other. So like I was saying, everything in the universe has a frequency. Everything is made up of energy. That also applies to your inner state. So your consciousness itself is energy and also your emotions. And your emotions are very, very powerful. Uh, I would even say that the emotion is the guidance system for your body. So I will show you guys a um, graphic right here. It's gonna give you an example of different moods, different emotions and how high or low that vibrates in your body. As you can see, lower emotions include fear, shame, guilt, anger, and the higher emotions are love, gratitude, joy, peace, and just beingness. That's why people <laughs> that's why people say I like your vibe. Like if you're you're vibrating at higher frequency, you're vibrating on a very positive, loving level. 
and that is contagious. It's like laughing is contagious or being in a bad mood can be contagious. Energy is contagious and whatever energy you, you choose to uh, hold on to is what you're going to attract more of in your life. Again, like attracts like. So one of the biggest, most powerful spiritual um, exercises you can do, or skills I should say, is to be able to control your own inner state. So whatever's happening around you, you don't let it come in. It's kind of like the metaphor of uh, if you have a, a boat, uh, if you don't let the water come into the boat, it won't sink. That's the same thing for you. So if you're able to maintain an, a frequency of love and high energy and joy and peace, no matter what's going on around you, it won't get inside of you. And even better, you're going to create like a ripple effect. So you're kind of like a drop in the ocean of pure love and that radiates outwards and creates more love and peace. Again, that can go both ways. Like if you wake up uh, in the morning and you stub your toe and you're like, oh, here we go again, one of those days. And you can just focus on the negative, negative all day and you're holding on to that anger and frustration, you're going to attract more um, negative opportunities for yourself. That's why people say like, oh, it's one of those days. No, you, you create your reality. You create what you attract by holding on to a negative frequency. Another thing that I want to mention, and this is about the book, The Secret and the documentary. Um, so one thing that we have to take into account is that the, the law of attraction doesn't only respond to our conscious mind. It responds to a combination of the conscious and the unconscious. So, what can happen is that it's kind of like an iceberg. Your conscious mind is what's on top of the water and your unconscious mind is everything that was submerged underwater. The unconscious mind, most of it has been um, created during the first seven years of your life. So that is your paradigm. That's how you perceive your reality. That's your beliefs about reality. And so, it's, so, it's something that we're not aware of. It's this sub subconscious mind. We have to do the inner work to reconnect with ourselves and to heal and transform that aspect of ourselves that is keeping us in the past or keeping us in trauma or keeping us in belief systems that no longer serve us. The reason I say this is because in the book or in the documentary, it kind of makes it seem like if you think about money, like let's say, and have a hundred dollars i'm gonna have a hundred dollars today like that's going to attract instantly what you you uh, want but they're not taking into account uh the subconscious mind the physical body and everything that adds on to your vibration so no matter how many affirmations you do about attracting abundance if you have a subconscious or limiting belief that money is evil or uh, that money is hard to come by that's going to overpower the affirmations because that frequency is so intense in your subconscious mind the good thing is you are able to reprogram the subconscious mind it just takes a little bit of work you can do that through meditation reiki therapy hypnosis for example uh, the goal is to integrate the experience and let it go so that you can recreate your own paradigm your own um, perception of reality and then then you get into the power of the law of attraction because everything just shows up like that keep in mind as well the law of attraction isn't just being in your bed and be like okay i want to attract this partner and you stay in bed all day and you're not doing anything like you have to take inspired actions so once you set the intention on what you want and align yourself to who you are and being a person that is able to track that you need to take action that is inspired so you'll know when to take action because it'll feel like into uh, an intuitive hit like oh, i should probably check my phone right now or oh, i should probably call this friend and maybe they're going to invite you to a party and you're going to meet that person so just for an example uh you can't expect everything to come to you if you don't make any effort although i must say that the effort it's it has to come from a place of flow it can't be like hitting a wall right it has to be 
um, effort, but in an easy way, if that makes sense. All right, I realize a lot of that is again a little bit more fringe, so I'm going to explain to you another thing about the law of attraction that I learned just recently, and I thought it was really, really cool, especially for people that are very um, rational, not rational, but uh, practical minded and very like. Uh, skeptical of spiritual teachings for example so there's something in the brain that's called the reticular activating system and I just learned about this and I thought it was the coolest thing so basically the, the brain is part of your brain and the job that it has is to take in all the information around you during the day and the night all of it and triage it so basically choose the the aspects in your day that it wants to take in and memorize and notice more um for example i'm going to give you a really good example a lot of people that are spiritual connect to the number 11 11. so they will say every time i look at the clock it's 11 11 like it's a sign from the universe and it might be who knows but another thing that um could be the reason is that your brain registers when it sees it from the corner of your eye okay 11 11 means something to me it's all about how it what it means to you and the the brain will notice that if it means something and if it doesn't mean it will just ignore it that's what makes the difference between a problem oriented person or a solution oriented person if you focus all the time and you tell your, your that part of your brain that you are surrounded by opportunities, you are loved, you are uh, supported, people appreciate you, pre people appreciate your work. If that's what's going on in your mind, the brain, that part of your brain, that reticular activating system is going to look for proof around you that that's true and the proof has always been there but if you program your mind to only focus on the negative you're gonna find proof that all of these things aren't true that you're actually you're gonna start thinking oh, i'm no good uh, i don't have anything to offer people don't actually like me and so on and so forth so yeah i thought that was pretty neat um that the brain does that and it makes a lot of sense because you know like when you meet somebody and that's just they just have that vibration of love and peace and joy and they attract they're like magnets for good opportunities and you're like how did they even, how are they so lucky i would argue that they're not lucky they are open-minded they're open to the opportunities that are already there for everybody there's no special treatment in the world i think we're all equals we all have a chance to create the life that we want Whew, I'm out of, out of breath this time. I'm so passionate about the subject, but basically, yeah. And the opposite is, is true as well. Like you know, somebody they're like always grumpy and complaining. Complaining is the bigger, the biggest one. Like ah, for, this is not working, whatever. And they're so focused on what's not working that they can't see right in front of them. There might be an opportunity right there, but they can't see it. They're so focused on what's not going right. Another cool fact, I'm not 100% sure about the numbers, but I think it's around that. So the brain captivates 80,000 bits of information a day. And the reticular activating system only keeps 2,000. What is that 2,000? You get to choose based on your uh, what you think is important to you and what your subconscious thinks is important to you that's why it's so important to do the work for the subconscious as well so before i go i just wanted to talk about one more thing uh, i explained how the law of attraction works but how does how do i can i actually master it like what can i do to actually apply this information in my life uh, i have one technique that i use and it's so so powerful and i want to share it with you guys it's called scripting so basically scripting is you have a journal or a piece of paper or whatever and you're going to be writing a script kind of like a movie script of your ideal life in a very a very detailed version of that um everything that you want you, you're going to write it in present tense that's the most important part you have to write it in present tense as as though that you already have it um so you write that write it down as long as you want 
and I want you to read this piece of paper every single morning in your head or out loud in the present tense. So what's going to happen is that over time, your brain is going to start believing that this is actually real or this is on its way at the very least. And you're going to start attracting with your frequency, with your energy and noticing with the reticular activating system, uh, the things that align to that dream. That's how you work with the law of attraction. You have to write down or know what you want to attract and truly know that it's possible to attract it. And that's the, the biggest technique I could give you guys is that the scripting. Also, another one that's really good too is uh, gratitude. So maybe I would say at nighttime, either you sit in your head like I'm grateful for X, Y, and Z, or you write it down like you can write a whole list of things that you're grateful for. Because I've noticed, again, it keeps you in the mindset of... Um, <laughs> it keeps you in the mindset of uh, what you already have instead of what you lack which is a different vibration like having something and being grateful is higher a higher vibration than focusing on what you don't have um, yeah so that's about it for today I hope you learned something new today I'm so happy to be able to make these videos with you guys and I love 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 the 